I'm going for a ride. <sighs> I picked up some trash out here. I wonder if these people would care if I put this trash and they're uh, 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 my hearing aid's not working good at all. I picked it up, I put it in the trash can. My hearing aid is not working good at all. And I hate this. Oh, there's a can. Let me get it. You know, uh, I don't understand why People that's famous and depends on millions of people. I'm talking about like Taylor Swift. She comes out and publicly endorses Trump instead of Harris. And here's the thing, if you're real, real popular, like say for instance, I've only got about 1,500 subscribers on my channel. And out of those 1,500, there's only about 30 or 40 of them that, uh, Watch my channel. Somewhere there about. <laughs> How y'all doing? Y'all have a good day. But uh, I've only got like maybe 50 people that watch my channel. So I'm not all that popular. But you take somebody like Taylor Swift. Very popular. She's a billionaire. And she comes out and supports Harris. There's some hurricane damage right there. Uh, 
Um, not much. But here's the thing. I'm just saying, if I was Taylor Swift, which I'm not, in my mind, if she's going to come out and publicly endorse Harris or Trump, either one, don't matter, but she endorsed, endorses uh, uh, Harris, uh, you're going to piss off about half of your audience. It goes about 50 50. You can piss off about 50% of them. And why do that? Why not keep your dang mouth shut? There's some more hurricane damage. And George Clooney, he endorses Harris or the Democrat Party. I don't know if he's so much uh, supports Harris or not. But there again, he depends on millions of people to want to go out and watch his movies and stuff. So why, why not just keep your mouth shut and say it's none of your business who I support? That's why I didn't want to come out as a Republican. Because I don't know if I pissed any of my subscribers off. But when you do that and you're in the public's eye, you're going to make certain people mad. Yes, you are. It just don't make no sense to me. And there's a lot of people since Taylor Swift publicly endorsed uh, Harris. A lot of parents have come out and said, I won't spend another dime on tickets to any of your shows. That's what they said. There's a bus stop right there. Uh, it just don't make no sense to me why you would come out. Usually, some people don't mind saying who. Well, there's the man cutting his grass.
mowing his grass. But that's just my thoughts on that. That's just my thoughts on that. Um, I kind of got a story. What's today? Friday? I want to see something up here. I really need to get me an electric quill share. So that I can I want to get a job. I want to get a job. And see, I'm right down the street. From, uh, uh, A city bus stop. See that blue sign right there? It says Sun Tran. This is a bus stop. I could pull up here in my wheelchair and the bus would stop and pick me up with my electric wheelchair. They got a spot in their bus where they just pull you in there and you, they park you in a place and buckle you down. And you can go all over the county and the city bus and transfer or what have you. Uh, this hearing aid sucks. Uh, I'm trying to remember my Christmas of 1956. Let's see, I was. 15 years old, so that means 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 1956. It was Christmas Eve, living in Winston-Salem. In a, in a, uh, did I see a sign on this place still? Yeah, the sign's still here, so this place is still for sale. But yeah, it was Christmas Eve. Can't remember what day of the week it was. And I lived at 728 North Cherry Street.
It was Christmas Eve, 1956. And <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Daddy was out on a drunk. Daddy was out on a drunk. And probably around about five PM I just went out walking. I just went out walking and <clears throat> it was an old neighborhood. I lived at 728 North Cherry Street. And uh, lived in a boarding house with my dad. So I went out walking around the neighborhood and a lot of those big houses they had these big picture windows and and you could see the Christmas trees in there that they had <coughs> decorated smoke shop when did that up right there it is I'm gonna go check that out and uh, yeah, you can see the Christmas trees in there lit up. You can see the kids running around in there, and it's all excited because it's night before Christmas and all that good stuff. And. I just felt so lonesome. Had no family. There won't no Christmas tree in my room. There won't any gifts. And I pretty much Smoke shop, vape shop, oh, oh. wow. That was so long. My mother was living with her second husband in Jacksonville, Florida. My sister Carolyn was living with mother. And uh, and Michael and Joe was living with mother. George was living with Aunt Rosa May. How you doing, dear? Good, Can I you? ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Trump or Harris? Or you can say none of my business. I'm a Trump girl. I'm a Trump girl. Who? Trump. 
Crump? Yeah. Okay. How's it going? Good. It's going good. How about you? Okay. Thank you, dear. All right. I guess that that left. I everybody, just about everybody I ask is voting for Trump. They're closed today. Why? They're not open today. I don't think they're open today. But yeah, that was that was so lonesome. I'm just I can't remember if I was crying. I think I was crying. Um It was the first Christmas I ever had that uh, I didn't have family around except my daddy, but of course he was out drunk. He was out drunk. And turns out he didn't come back home to the room until maybe two days after Christmas. I don't know where he was at. But I had a roof over my head. I had uh, three square meals a day. And I was still going to school. I didn't quit school till I was 15 and 57. But that was a long, lonely time. Uh, that was at 728 North Cherry Street. But yeah, I was just walking the neighborhood looking in them big picture windows. How you doing, sir? But it is what it is. I think I'll go down through here and see if that was Sphinx. Um, they, I, I don't guess my mama and my daddy was going to, was ready to be parents. Cause let's see.
my daddy, he was uh, he was born in 1921, so in 57. Well, when I was born, he was 21. Born 21. 31, he was 20 years old when I was born. So by the time he was 28 years old, him and mama had five kids. I was born in 41, Carolyn was born in um, 42. The garbage people stopped by and they picked up three bags of trash. I don't, the landlord's not, she's not paying the trash bill. I, well, she may be, but she's not paying enough to cover three households. And that's what this is, three households. Three households. And the people that were in the bottom here, they moved out. And they moved down here to this house right here. And this house is the landlord's too. But this house here, they're gonna have to, and that, that house back there, that apartment, <clears throat> they didn't have to pay electric bill. The landlord paid it. But here they're going to have to pay an electric bill and a water bill because they're not on a well or a septic. They're on city water. Let me turn around. Now, in a couple of months, can you see these? This is the Japanese plums. And in a couple of months, let's see, this is, It's September, October, November. About three months, these will be ripe. And they're loaded. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save some seeds and start some more plants. My Japanese plum tree that's on the deck, that thing's almost eight foot tall now. I could sell that. I wonder I need to go talk to that lady. I sure like her truck. Okay, I'm back in the house. Talking about that Christmas. In 57, I think it was. 
the last Christmas. My mom and dad had five kids. There were seven of us. The last Christmas that all seven of us had together was 1950. When 1951 rolled around, Mom and Daddy separated on Mother's Day, 1951. So my next Christmas in 51, was me, was me, Daddy, and Carolyn. George was living with Aunt Rosa May, and Michael and Joe was living with Mama, wherever the hell she was at. Turns out she was in Jacksonville, Florida. At that time, we didn't know it. But 1950 was the last Christmas we had together as a family. And as far back as I can remember, uh, Daddy was an alcoholic. I assume he was because he come home drunk just about every night. He would get off work and he'd stop at this place called Vicks, V-I-C-K-S, was a, was a bar. And when he left Vicks, he'd come home drunk. Uh, I don't know how tight money was back then. But uh, Daddy worked at the uh, shipyards where they were building those Liberty ships for the World War II. So he was never drafted to go into the military because he worked at the shipyard. But yeah, he 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 came home drunk. And I remember one time. I think that's that's when it's like one of the um like. There was a salesman that come to our house. We lived in Broad Creek Village, in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, I'm doing the name drop, the name drop And uh, there was a salesman coming there selling dishes. And he was saying they was unbreakable and he'd turn a cup upside down on the floor and stand on it and it wouldn't break. And my daddy, he picked up one of the cups and threw it down on the floor as hard as he throw it. And it broke. And I can't remember what the outcome was of that. But Daddy, one time he was drunk. And we was at this place called the Open Air Market. This big supermarket. And Mama was in there, and me and Carolyn was, and the babies was in there. Wait, do you, who do you see? And Daddy was drunk, of course. I think and he decided to take, take a big country ham and stuck it under his coat. And tried to steal that out of the market. 
Well, they called him and he was arrested. And, and mama wouldn't come get him out of jail, bail him out or whatever. I know it was two or three days before daddy ever come home. But my whole family was banned from that market after that. And we went to that market a lot. But the whole family was banned. Kids couldn't go there. Mama couldn't go there. Daddy couldn't go there. And I forget now which march they started going to after that. But that was... Uh, my life back in them days. Uh, before I go, I want to thank... Uh, speaking of Norfolk, Virginia, I've got a subscriber in Norfolk, Virginia. And it's George W. Baker and Sandra L. Baker. They sent me a nice letter. I appreciate it so much. And they live in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I don't know. I hadn't been. I hadn't been back to Norfolk in many, many years. But I appreciate uh, Sandra. Uh, and. Well, I won't say who they're for in the election. They might not want nobody to know. I don't know. But it don't matter. But, y'all, yeah, thank you, Sanders. Thank you so much. That was a bright spot in my day. But I can't I wish I could go back to North Well, Broad Creek Village is long gone. That they they tore all that down. We lived at thirteen thirty one North Woodlawn Avenue. And I went there in elementary school. I did. My uh, sister did. And George, my oldest brother, not older than me, but he's a, he was the third one born. And uh, of course, George passed away just recently, and I sure miss him. But we went to uh, school there. Uh, we went to a private Seventh-day Adventist school. We were not Seventh-day Adventists, but that's the school they put us in because my grandma Pearson was a Seventh-day, I mean a staunch Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, he put us in that school because she asked where she wanted us to go. Oh, uh, but Broad Creek Village, that was right there off of Princess Anne Highway. And I don't know how clue what route that was or anything. But it was a... Uh, it was a nice little school, you know, and I made good grades. The only school I ever went to that I actually made excellent grades. And I don't know why that was. It's like when I went, started going to public schools, I dumbed down. <laughs> I dumbed down. 
But anyway, thank you so much, Sandra. Well, it's not a peacoat thing. And uh, I love getting letters, you know, like that. Nobody gets letters hardly anymore. No, nobody uses. Uh, by the way, I'm going to send you a personal message on your email. I think I've got that right. But anyway, thank you so much. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it today. I'll see you in the next one. See ya. GoPro, stop recording.